Greetings to you, the body of Christ. Welcome to Glory to God Ministry Church. Thank you for being here in your place and in your stead. I pray that you've been safe and all has been well with you and your week and your walk and your experience with God and his kingdom. Today I want to encourage you as people who are beloved, people who are in the love feast of God. That's us. That means that you love God by the first commandment with all your heart, soul, and mind, and also that he loves you. It's you love him, he loves you. It's a relationship, and we love one another. The two great commandments that we should find setting among us is that we are people who love God, and we love one another. Love is a very powerful word. Love is who God is. And we are called to be even as he is. And so love has a behavior and a conduct and a lifestyle that represent the heart of our Father. So in our growing and developing in the kingdom through a lifestyle of salvation, that we are people in a covenant relationship with God, and Christ is the mediator who's mediating this relationship to bring us into what God has called us into and to make sure there's no wrath between God, God's wrath is not kindled against us. Because today we're sitting here as a people of reconciliation, that there's harmony and there's peace between us and God, who's our Father. So again, I believe that your heart is a pure heart. And the Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And I say this in a redundant way because I want you to get, when I look back at you or you look at me, that I believe I'm talking to people who is in love with God. Amen? Amen. In love. You're in the love feast. And people that love God, they keep his word. Amen? And God has responsibility by covenant to keep you. Amen? That's how relationship works. And it's a committed relationship that you have with God through his son, Jesus Christ. So we are growing, we're developing, we're maturing. And God dearly loves those people who love him. He dearly loves the people who love him. And the people that do not love God, there's a wrath kindled against those people. Amen? And that's why we have a mediator who's bringing us into the relationship by knowledge that you and I would conduct and behave ourselves in a way that is pleasing. Because God is to take pleasure in you, and you are to take pleasure in him. So the things that I say, sometimes it may be like um, very hard, very difficult to understand. But he's given us the mystery of the kingdom. I say hard because truth, um, sometimes we say it hurts. Amen? Um, but when you want to get better, you don't mind the truth that hurts you. Amen? Now, you can be hurt or offended. Some is offended and some of us are hurt. I got my feelings hurt following God. They get hurt all the time. Amen? Amen? When you love somebody, you'll hurt their feelings by telling them the truth, right? My mama used to hurt my feeling all the time. My daddy hurt my feeling all the time. So when you love people, you'll tell them the truth, right? How many want the truth? Amen. How many know you would go to the doctor and the doctor would say, well, I, I see something in your body. And I, I believe I can go in there and get it. But I'm going to I'm have to cut you from here to there. Okay. It may be a five-hour surgery. And you'll say, Doc, do, what you ha- do whatever you need to do. Yeah. I want to get better. Yeah. Amen? I want to be healthy, whole, and sound in my body. So I'm willing to trust you to go in and operate on me and remove the issue from me. Yeah. Amen? Am I talking to that kind of people today? Yeah. Amen. So whatever is said, it is not in a way to be demeaning. It is not to, to hurt you, but it's to help you. You should know the truth, and the truth, truth shall make us free. Amen? Because I want to know that, that you feel safe sitting next to the person you're sitting next to. Amen? Now, understanding we was born unhealthy. Amen? We had a first birth. Okay? And that first birth gave us a twofold nature. Our first birth, we came in with a twofold nature after man's sin. Okay? So, therefore, with this nature, it's a nature that is not acceptable. So we have to come into houses like this and hear men and women stand up and proclaim to us the heart of our God and our Father, okay? And 
to know that he want better for us. He want the best for all of us. And the beauty of us becoming what he will, we can enjoy each other, be safe with each other, be healthy with each other, and then that God is glorified. Amen? God is glorified how I treat you and how you treat me. What I say to you, what you say to me. Amen? And he's calling us to be responsible with what we say. We've been talking about uh, idle words, non-functioning words, words that render people inoperative, right? Because of, of a faulty heart. And one thing I've learned in following the Lord, that my heart was born faulty, very fraudulent, very deceptive, okay? But it's not accepted with him who loves us. So the word we have today, we're going to continue to talk about the twofold product of a tree that must be, if we desire through love, you must be willing to change from a twofold. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give you the, the, the subject today because we talked on Wednesday night about a twofold product. Twofold product. Okay, the tree was a twofold product in the garden. It was a twofold forbidden, forbidden product that was on a tree. One tree had two folds to it. It had a good side and had an evil side. Amen. And God says, stay away from the tree with two folds. Amen. It is forbidden for you to ever know or get involved with this tree that have two folds. It has two parts to it. Amen. It's one tree with two parts. Okay. Our nature have two parts. When mom and dad put us together, they created us with two folds. It's a nature that does not like God. It's a nature that's very haughty. It's a nature that's enmity against God. It's hostile against God because that nature will to do what it won't. So in our learning and growing, it's going to be important for you to know you are in a relationship with God the Father and his son, Jesus Christ. And the Holy Ghost is in this world with you to lead you, guide you, and comfort you in all truth. Okay? That you may be a glorious church in the earth realm. We may be a virtuous people in the earth realm. I may be a virtuous man in the earth realm. A man of a more excellent standard in character. Amen? Whose character is without flaw. Wow, that's a standard from God. The world will let us have a, a character with flaws. You're okay, and God understands. God don't understand spots, blemish, or wrinkle. Amen? He don't understand that. So now, he's calling for changes, not me. He's calling for changes. So therefore, today's word is about if we understand we have a twofold nature. But he's going to say in, in Matthew 12, 33, he tell the followers, he tell the students to do something. Let's go back. We've been there, and we're going to go back again, because in Matthew chapter 12, verse 33, this is what it says. Here's instruction, or here's the counsel. Okay? Here's the counsel, or here's the word of instruction as students of the word. Now, I love the relationship. It caused my life to be successful in this world, even in adversities and trials and tribulation. I count him still worthy. Amen. 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 He builds us into fires. Yes, Amen. Yes, fires, <laughs> fires are not always fun. Amen. Amen. But fires tell the story of the nature of the character of the person you are. Yes, Amen. 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 So I want to grow. I want to develop because he's not going to just take anything and accept anything. God has a standard. Hear what it says. The word is started out with Matthew 12, 33. Either make the tree good. Either. Here we're going to have a choice here now. He said either make the tree good, make it that is honorable, make it whole, make it healthy, make it sound, make the tree. The tree here is symbolic of the soul. The soul here, we talk about soul, we talk about the inward part of us, the reign of man's heart. Okay? So when I say soul, I'm talking about the heart, the mind, and the soul. Three parts to us in this one casket. Okay? I'm in my earthly casket. And understand what a casket carries. How many know when you put your loved one in a casket, you see something in that casket that's valuable? Amen? Now, the casket is nothing what that holds you, holds something valuable. How many know when you put your loved one away, you go and pick the best casket? Amen? That may sound a little morbid, but I want you to get it. Okay? This is nothing more than a casket that carries your eternal soul. Amen? It said, it, it said it, this is a, uh, there's treasure in earthen vessel. Okay? When I define the word 
uh, earthen vessel, it gave me the word casket. I said, casket? Yes. He said, you put what's valuable in casket. You don't just throw it in a hole. Amen? Your body is nothing but a temporary place that you're in. Now, that carries the real you. Okay? The real you is not black. The real you is not white. It's not black. Uh, 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 any of uh, well, black, yellow, green, what we, we say that. But I'm talking about the ethnicity and your nationality because of the color of your skin. Amen? Now, to know there's a real you on the inside. Living in this casket. Okay? And it's a relationship that God is calling for you to understand that there's a treasure in you. Okay? There's a treasure inside of this, this, this body. How many value who you are in your soul, your mind, your spirit? Amen? How many think that you're nothing? Amen? How many know that you're very valuable to God? Okay, so you live in a house that is temporary. Okay, it's housing you until death calls us to depart from this body. Okay, not to chase that, but I want you to understand that you live in a casket. Amen. I remember seeing my mom in that casket. And if somebody would have walked up to that casket and start mistreating that casket, that's my mama. And I value what's in that casket. And we're not going to mistreat what's in that casket. Amen? She was laid out in a very beautiful, gorgeous way. Amen? And you notice when you walk up to the casket, you walk up with respect, right? How many know that you are living in a temporary house? In a transitory world that we cannot stay in? This is not home. This is not home. We're on our way home. Jesus went home before us. And he went to get things ready for. So let's learn today because you have a choice. You have an option here. And the call of the work that you have to do with your salvation as a people that God has given power to you to, that you can become what God will. As many as received him, the Bible says he gave them power. He gave them power. He gave them power. He gave them power. He gave them power, gave them power to become. Not of anything. But the sons of God. Amen. Amen. So the subject here is tra transforming a twofold nature. Transforming a twofold nature. So we went here to show you that he required that the tree be made good, that the soul be made good, that the heart be made good, that the mind be made good or honorable. Amen. And when it's made good, then you're going to do what is honorable. Amen. Amen. You're going to say out of your mouth what is honorable. You're going to behave in a way that's honorable. Amen? Because there's a, how many believe there's a treasure in an earthen vessel? Amen. Amen? It says a treasure in earthen vessel. Are you junk? You're treasure, right? In an earthen vessel. This vessel will go back to the ground from which it came. Amen? And then God's going to bring it out of this vessel and prepare to take it to a new house. A house that's not made by hand, eternal in the heaven. So this moment of learning and being in this classroom is not about entertaining. It's not about hitting and hurting people, but it's about getting you to grow up in the relationship of God's love. Amen. He loves us. Amen. You're on a love feast. He's not out to get you. He's out here to help us. Amen. So now, do we want to be what God wants? Say, thy will be done. Your purpose that pleasures you be done in the earth realm by me the choice here according to the gospel you have two options you make it good you make the tree good you make the fruit good amen the fruit is the product the product here is one fruit without an s you only have one fruit and but one righteousness you only, one, you only bear one fruit of righteousness. Again, when I, when I think about my neighbor's tree, all around that tree, even one uh, named fruit called grapefruit. It may be many grapefruit, but it's only one grapefruit. Amen? One grapefruit, that tree will bear only one nature. Now, if that tree starts bearing two or three nature, we're going to call it a duplex. Amen? 
because he has more than one. So in this today, I want you to understand you have a work to do. You have a decision to make. Amen. And I love this relationship that I found with God through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I love him going to the marrow of my bone. Hallelujah. Amen. Not to the bone, to the marrow. Yes, Amen. He go beyond the bone. He get in the marrow of the bone. Yes, How many glad that God work and get down in the marrow of the bone? Yes. And he didn't get in there to do me bad. He got in there to do me good. Yes, Amen. So he says, option two, or else make the tree corrupt. Make it bad. Make it foul. Make it filthy. Make it nasty. Make it evil. Just do it. It's going to be your choice now. So what other words, I will accept you making it bad, and I will accept you making it good. Either or, right? Now, but I won't accept it the way it is. I can understand if you're evil, you're just evil. But when you say you're good, you're honorable, then you respect every doctrine as it is written, as you read your own manual, you study your own Bible, amen, you're going to find that God is going to make a second man, amen? I want you to get that because in the transforming, you're leaving your first man to go now and be a second man. How many know there was a first Adam and there came a second Adam, amen? So the first man, there's a second man. Now, if you're going to go out to the second, if you're going to be in Christ, you're going to be like the second man. The first Adam was the first man who ate of a twofold tree. Amen. And she only looked at the good of the tree. But God told her that the tree was good and evil. Amen. So the work today is now, how do I make this tree good? You got to understand we have instruction of how to do it. How do I do it? I used to wonder, could I do it? Amen. Paul said, I went to do good. Romans chapter 7. I went to do good. But when I went to do good, evil was there. Then he said, the good that I would, I didn't do. Amen. But the evil that I shouldn't have did, that I did. Raise your hand. Amen. Now, now that we're in Christ, now that you're in Christ Jesus, you're not in black, you're not in white, you're not in Baptist, you're not in Methodist, you're not in this organization called Glory to God Ministry, you're in a person called Christ Jesus. Do you agree? Christ Jesus. And I'm excited about his, the resurrection Sunday that's coming. Not Easter, not chicken, not rabbit. Amen. We're going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. Amen. We're not going to say happy rabbit, happy Easter. We happy, happy resurrection. Easter is a holiday. It's just not your holiday. Amen. It's a pagan holiday that merged in about the same time of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Amen. Can you shout with me at the count of three? Happy resurrection is coming. One, two, three. Happy resurrection is coming. Okay, that Sunday is coming. Get our hearts ready because we're going to be talking about the one who makes it possible for us to become a one-fold because I'm tired of being a duplex. Amen? A duplex is a house where two families can live in one roof. Under one roof, there's two families. How many side of two families being under one roof? So we're going to have a transforming of the nature. Transforming. How many want God to help you to keep on transforming? And I can tell you now, it is a high calling. It's heaven calling me to another level of measure of the man Christ Jesus. Amen? So, let's look at because let me ask the question, how many is ready to make the tree good Amen. and the product good? Good means honorable. 
that you will do what is pleasing, what is acceptable, what is perfect when they come to God's will. I'm going to say that again. You will perform. It will be your arrogance. It will be your work. It will be your business. Amen? To do the work of God and make it honorable. How many are ready to go there? I want what I say tonight to be honorable. What I do with my body to be honorable. What I say to my wife to be honorable. What I say to my brethren to be honorable. If it's not honorable, it's not pleasing. Amen? Amen? So, in this transformation, we're transforming, right? We're going to train, we're gonna, that word simply means that we're going to turn into another character, another person. So we're going to transform. I'm going to change. I make it simple. I'm just going to change. And I can author the changes. Amen. How many know if you don't author it, it can't be. I can't author your change and you can't author mine. And when you author the change, then you're going to get one called the author and the finish of your faith. All right? He can't start a work that you hadn't authored. Amen. David wanted him to author a clean heart. So transforming into a twofold nature. No, I was born in that. We transforming a twofold nature. We're transforming a twofold, meaning that we're gonna go to a onefold. Say onefold. Onefold, one-fold means whole, complete. Okay? A twofold means you're a double. It means that you are duplex. Amen? That means you have two sides to you. You have the side where, and I said on Sunday, that it vexes me when I hear the saints say, and I'm speaking in tongues, supposedly. And then they have another tongue. They have sweet water and bitter water. A, a tongue that's so important, that's the same tongue? And then you know how to act out in a way that's just not right. You made that person next to you feel so low. You stop them from functioning by your words or your deeds. Amen. They can't hold their head up because of these multiple personalities. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at now how to change all right, into another person. Okay, it's a work that you must do. Okay, it's a job that you must employ yourself to do. When I wake up throughout the week, like this week start, I already look at the days that I have to set aside to discipline myself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And tell myself, go past sleep, wake up in the morning, go past breakfast, and then go past lunch, and go and stop at dinner. Amen? It'll do you good. Because if you can tell you, you're not going to have your way today, you begin to rule over your whole being. But when you let your being rule over you, you'll never change. What you do, you'll make excuses for your behavior. Amen? And you act like somebody has to love what they don't even like. So now... Students, since we understand you can make, it's your power to do it. That's why he gave power for you, so you can use your power to work out your soul's salvation. Okay? Yes, when he gave you power, he gave you power to change. Okay? Power. He gave you the ability to change your behavior. Amen? Now, let's go to... This is what he got me on years ago. He scared me. Let's go to John's Gospel, chapter 12. I was mad at the church one Wednesday night. My fellow brethren, the one who loved the Lord Jesus Christ, and I told my God and my Lord to kill some of them. Kill the bad ones. Kill the evil ones. Because I didn't expect duplexes to be in the body of Christ. Amen? 
I expect everybody who spoke in tongue and everybody who had the, had the Holy Ghost and saved to act like saved folks. They realize we all had to grow in the grace. All right? So I really shout it out of my mouth. I utter out of my mouth, Lord, kill some of them so that they will know I'm your man. And I told him, I'm going to quit. I'm going to stay saved, but I'm not preaching no more. So I quit Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday I got a visitor. And I got up, and I walked out my bedroom, still grieved, still mad, because, yes, the behavior that was going on in the trailer was just indignant, ungodly. Non-functioning words, non-functioning behaviors. So, Lord, let them know. Just let them know I'm your man. Yes, Thank you, oh, you make it be about you now, huh, buddy? <laughs> it's amazing how we can make it be about us. Yes, okay? Now, he purchased you, and he wanted me to know you're not the mediator. Thank you, okay? You're not mediating nothing between me and man. Thank That's my job. But what you're going to do, you're going to herald my word and preach my word because I have agreed to have a love feast with these people. Now, for those who don't hear me, I'll separate at the end. That's not your job. Amen. It's not your job. Imagine how these preachers, we just think we're a little bit more. You're not. You just got a job to do. Amen. Say, I'm, you're not my father, my heavenly father. You're my brother. So in the gospel, this is the word that he gave me. I heard the voice say to me, I want you dead. Walking down the hall, and I was going to turn to go to the den, and then the voice said, I want you dead. I said, want me dead. So instead of going in the den, I kept walking into the dining room, living room, dining room, and there's a big wall with a big mirror on it. So I'm staring in the mirror like, want me dead? Want me dead? I'm the good one. <laughs> then the voice said, except a corn of wheat, fall into the ground and die. Die, you abide alone. Amen. You're too sensitive. You're making it be about you. I want you dead. Okay. Now, I got that dead thing three times over a period of time. Amen. So, this is how we are going to transform. So, in verse 23. And Jesus answered them because it was some people who was looking for Jesus. And Jesus just replied in verse 23. And Jesus answered them saying, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, I utter unto you, I verbalize to you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. Amen? Except it die. Cease living. Cease existing above ground. Amen? It abide alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. What he's simply saying, your firstborn nature can never produce what I want. Actually, I have to absent myself from you. I cannot accompany you because of your firstborn form. Your firstborn form, your firstborn nature, I cannot use. But if I can get you to get rid of you, if I can get you to get rid of you, see, I can't offer you getting rid of you. You're going to have to offer that yourself. How many know you need to get rid of you? Amen. I wanted God to get rid of me. He said, no, that's your job to get rid of you. Amen. It's your job. I don't condemn you, I convict you. And once you get a conviction, you condemn yourself. Amen? You condemn what's inappropriate. You condemn what's not, what's right, what's not right. 
Amen. You put a stop to it and say unfit for use. There's words that I had to condemn that was going on in my heart and in my mind. Amen. Amen. The Lord never condemned David. Did he? David condemned himself. Amen. Nathan brought a message. Nathan just said, you the man. Yeah, yeah. Then he started hollering for mercy. Yeah. Because what he did was hideous, yeah. wicked, yeah. wrong, ungodly, bad. Because the nature is a twofold nature. It's a duplex. Yeah. The good David was a good devil too. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The good you is a good devil too. Yeah. The good me is a good devil too. So he's calling us to look at the good, evil, and bad us. How many truly can identify with twofold nature? Now, y'all listen to this because one thing about any nature, any, all that God makes has a nature to it. The cat has a nature, the dog has a nature, everything has a nature, right? And you will know that person by their nature, by their constitutional belief of who they are, the essence of who they are, the essence of who they are. This is who I really am. Okay? It's not my suit. It's not the necktie. It's not the moment of standing before this camera. It's more to me than what you see, because in this casket is a person. Amen? Now, it's up to me to make it be holy and a treasure on the inside. Amen? Amen. Now, he said, he that love is his life shall lose it. Love is his life. Now, understand that he's calling for changes in Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. He said, the tree can be made. You do this. Either, either choose which one you want it to be. Okay? Now, God is not going to accept the tree being twofold. He never made it twofold. He made it onefold. In the garden, he never made the man, not in the garden, before the garden, he didn't make the man good or evil, did he? He breathed into his nostril, man became a living soul. Man is in a state of approval day one. Amen? When God made the man, God talked to the man, God walked with the man, and God had this man made in his image and in his likeness. Amen? When people experience you, who image do they see? Some of us got a church image, and we got an after church image. And some of us got a before church image. Amen? Now, when we get upset, things don't go our way, you'll see what come out of us. Amen? So, he that loves his life, you have affection for yourself? I know what Oprah teach. Self-love. But your Bible teaches you to hate. Hate what God hate. Okay? So therefore, he that loves his life is going to lose it. The word lose means you're going to ruin you. You're going to mar you. You're going to destroy you. Okay? When you love you, you're going to ruin you. Because you're going to always cater to you, to self. This is how I feel. This is what I think. It's my opinion. It's my ideal. You don't care about other people. All I do is care about myself. Amen? Selfish? Amen? Me first? Amen? You better not call me too many times. Amen? Because that's the duplex behavior. So we got the first man now gives us a, two, a twofold nature, and the nature is good and evil. So the gospel call it a tree, but it's really talking about the soul. Amen? So in order for me now to become transformed into a onefold, I must hate me. Because if you hold to you, you're going to drag that old dead man around and keep pleasing him, right? Let me do this right quick, and we're going to move a little further. He that hated his life in this world shall keep it, it unto how long? Okay. Hate. Hate who? 
His neighbor's life. How many know most of us got a problem with everybody's life? He make me sick. She make me sick. Oh, she get on my nerves. Oh, here she come, and here he come. You mad at everybody else, but you ought to be mad at yourself. You see everybody else's flaw, but you don't see what's in your own eye. That's us, right? Born jacked up like that, right? I can see how they need to die. Then God said, no, you need to die. Get rid of you. We can start working together then. Until then, buddy, until then you on your own. Yeah, and at that time, I didn't go to Walmart without a suit. I bought a new car, went only driving on the weekend. That's my preacher car. <laughs> bought me a, a nice brand new Lincoln LSC coupe. Uh, you know who I am? I'm Pastor Curl. God said, you're by yourself, too. That's why I can come down and be rich. Amen. I don't care about no title. That's my job. Amen. It's a lifestyle and a conduct and a relationship with a loving God who loved a wretch like me. Amen. Now, how many is ready to offer changes? If you offer the changes, he can offer your faith. Amen. Coming home to a mean man. Coming home to a mean woman. I mean, it's amazing. We go home and just cut up. Glory, hallelujah, right? No, ain't no glory at home. Ain't no hallelujah at home. You only do that when you come here with that other character. Paul said it best in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Transform your mind. Amen? To the number two man. Need to write that down. Transform your mind to the number two man. But the number two man is Christ. The number one man is the first Adam. What man messed you up and what man didn't raise you up? The number two man have done me well, done me good, right? So the number two man is actually telling me here in the gospel that if I love my life, I'm going to lose it. Amen. You're going to ruin your life. You're going to destroy your life. You're going to mar your name and everything about you become a stench. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Instead of people appreciate you, they just tolerate you. Yeah. Yeah. They're they, they glad to see you come. And then some of them hate to see you come, and they're glad to see you go. Right. Amen? And some of them scared to call you because they know. I wonder who's up in the duplex. <laughs> I called them, and guess what, girl? They was in a good mood. <laughs> That's bad when we have to consider because we don't know what character is going to be there. Right? Transformation. Transforming. God's kingdom is calling us into changes. All right? Transform the heart. Transform the heart. Okay? Now, transforming the heart, I'm going to give you this piece because I want you to look at it because when I looked at it, because in, in Jeremiah 17, 10, I believe, where it talks about the heart was deceitful. Jeremiah, Old Testament. It tells us something. I'm like, Lord. Jeremiah's Old Testament and verse chapter 17. The 9. Chapter 17. Because some great things are supposed to happen to us. Great things are supposed to happen for us. Amen? Even in tough times. Great things happen for us. Everything worked together for the good. Amen? Everything. Not something. Everything worked together for the good of those who love the Lord Jehovah God. Amen? Amen. How many love Jehovah God? Amen. Abba Father. And his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I love him, right? Amen. The love of God. Amen. Okay? And he says, this is what he says. The heart... Is deceitful above all things. It's fraudulent. It's faulty. Amen? So now, I want you to understand this because David realized 
I need a clean heart. I need a right spirit. Because what I have is faulty. How many have ready to condemn themselves like that? When he did what he did, the damage was done. And there's no glory for God. When the heart is right, there's glory and honor and blessings that you are able to say to God, you're worthy. Okay? Transform the heart. Right? So if the heart is deceitful, meaning it's fraudulent. Above all things. It exceeds everything. And not just that, he went on to say, it is desperately wicked. It is incurably. It's incurably. You can't even cure it. That's why we need a second man. Amen. The first Adam was a living soul. Understand this. The first man, living soul. So when he sinned, then that soul is now dead and trespasses in sin. Then everything he created, we all end up being born under a sin nature. Amen. Then the second man come along who is called a quickening spirit. He wasn't called a living soul. He didn't come with a living soul. He came with a quickening spirit, though he had a messed up soul. Because he had to put on sin for flesh. So he had to put on the same nature as the first man. But God made him a quickening spirit so that if he walked out what was written in the volume of the book, then he would be able to condemn what was in his flesh. I'm going to go slow on that because sometimes I never heard that before. The first man was from the earth, earthy. The second man is from above, called the Lord from above. He was made the word and came down here, but he had to put on sin nature. Amen. So that means the devil who cornered him in the wilderness, because God wanted his nature to be tested, thoroughly tested. 40 days, fire, 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 fire. Test the character. Test the nature. Test the trait. Test his constitution. And let's see what he have. Holy Ghost, get him out there and let the Holy Ghost, let the devil corner him. How many know you corner a dog? Every dog ain't a bad dog. Some dogs you better not corner. Because you'll make them bite you. But one thing about this point that I want to make, because once you transform, your work going to be tested. As to what sort it is. How many want to build a house that you want to live in out of junk? You don't, right? Because storms are coming. Okay, so understanding that you're going to play a part in building as to what comes and what you're going to be changing with. Your mind's going to change. How many know you can build out of hay? How many of you can build out of wood? But what's the best thing to build out of? Silver and gold. Amen? It'll go into fire and come out. Wood will burn up. Okay, what you want your character to be built out of? Because your works of what sort you built out of is going to be tested. Tomorrow you go to work, your, your relationship and who you are are going to be tested. How many know God let the devil corner Jesus and we want to see what kind of nature he had? Because before Jesus was cornered by the devil, he stopped by John the Baptist and did a baptism. Yes. Yes. Right? What did he bury? He buried the nature that he got from his mama. He buried that soulish part of him, that fallen part of him, that was issued to him, and he embraced what was written in the volume of the book. Now, God said, Holy Ghost, get him out there and keep him out there. He ain't had nothing to eat. He ain't had nothing to drink. He's most vulnerable. You know how it is when you hadn't eaten. (laughs) 
So, what is God doing? You, yeah, you did a baptism. You say you heard John pre- preaching. And unless, guess what? I gave him the Holy Ghost. Not to make him do nothing. But to lead him and to guide him and to comfort him and reveal to him. Now, guess what? Jesus had to own it. So God let him be tested. It's an old proverb in the true saying that once you corner someone, their true nature will come out. And you corner them with crisis, corner them with adversities, and it'll tell you who they are. Amen. Amen. Wasn't Job cornered? Wasn't he cornered? How many have some trials and tribulation and you've been cornered? And how many keep coming out saying, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. It's hard. I don't understand why I'm going through. Amen. But I thank you. Well, let me back up and be real. My first time was not thank you. Come on. We're going to keep this real. When I got saved, I expect no trials, no troubles, no tribulation, because everybody I saw at church was dressed like happy. They said glory, hallelujah about everything. Amen. God, praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Every time they say a word, they say praise God. Amen. They never told you they had a real trial, did they? They never told you they lost their job. Children acting up. Amen. I'm married, but I don't know if I want to stay married. Y'all, real? Don't get quiet on me now. If you sit next to your husband, you know you done said it, but didn't tell him. Don't do nothing. Just, just play along with me right now. Oh, you was thinking that. <clears throat> How much more can I put up with? Okay. Keep Jesus on the main line. Amen. And so in the early walk, I began to have fiery trial after fiery trial after fiery trial after fiery trial. And I became weary because I, I prayed, I fast, I paid my tithe. I'm living right. Then I'm looking at the heathen, and they spread like a green bay tree. They don't even go to church, God. So the devil came to me one morning in the bathroom and sat down on the tub. I sat down, and I was in the tub, and he just sat down like I can tell he was sitting right there. He didn't get in the tub. He sat on the edge right there. I was in a low place. Thing wasn't going well. And the devil said, you know, you was doing better when you weren't saved. I'm like, mm-hmm. He said, um, you know, they got a lot of jobs in Atlanta. You know, you just got married, you know, and you just got saved. You, you can walk away from all of it. Don't want well, nobody to know if you go to Atlanta. You got to have a new beginning. And I remember someone that comes in and said, you're right about that. Because the fire t- trials was really, I want to see what you've made of now. Do you love me for real? Yeah. And I pulled out of it, but I went to go back to correct because you don't always say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Right? What Job did, I don't know how long it took him to learn that, but when we read the story, he's well, he's complete, he's whole, he's sound, he's healthy. He, he owns it. He has a constitution. He believes it. It's the essence of who he is. He's Job. He's Job who's perfect. He's Job who's upright. He shuns evil. That's growth and development. Job had a transformation of his inward man. And he had a constitution about God that he told his wife, who had a different constitution, you speak as a foolish woman. 
I own this moment. It's rough, but I've had a transforming of my mind. It's my conviction. So, understanding your heart can be fraudulent. My heart was faulty. You know what I had to learn to get rid of? A faulty heart. You write that down because guess what? You're going to make the tree good or you're going to let it be, remain a twofold and think God is going to accept it? Well, he's not. Okay? We've got a few minutes. I want to close this out with understanding so you can really get it because you have to decide to lay aside the weight and the sin. Amen? Sin means sin nature. Because every time you get cornered, you start cussing again. Every time you get cornered, you start lusting again. Uh-huh. You start, you know, you go, go back. Okay? Because the Bible says, in Second Peter, I believe, that a dog will go back to his... Yeah, how many ever had a, have a dog and seen a dog do it? And you holler, no, don't do that. And the dog looked back at you, what's wrong with you? <laughs> That's my nature. <laughs> right? Yeah. I bathe my dog. Yeah. And she's clean. Then she goes to the door and starts jumping up and down. I said, you're not going outside. Because I know what you're going to do. Yeah. Walla in the grass. <laughs> Being like, That's what I do. <laughs> I'm going back to get dirty again. It says you can bathe a hog or a pig, and he's going to go back to his wallowing hole. Know why? That's his nature. You can put robes on us, but if we don't transform the mind, the heart, the character, and get a constitution. You're going to just be churching. Amen. You just gonna, we're just going to be churching. But the world and the community knows our story. They're simply saying, you one of us. you just like us. Amen. You get mad like I get mad. You curse like I get. Ain't nobody perfect. That's what the church said. Ain't nobody perfect. That's what the church said. Ain't nobody perfect now. I ain't say I was perfect now. Amen. You know what? When you transform, you're going to transform to be whole, right? And sound, right? You just spelt perfection. Amen. So, in understanding, let's go look at Revelation chapter 6. And this is brief, but I think you're getting the point. Y'all getting this? Yes. Okay. Because, see, transforming back to a onefold character. Okay? I want to be the holy man. Amen? Not the man who dressed like it, but lived like it. And as you transform, you're going to stop your own self. You're going you're to bind your own self. And you're going to loose your own self. That's keys to the kingdom, right? They're righteous keys to do righteous things. Okay? Revelation chapter 3, this is a church. Okay. What I said? Okay, y'all learning. Y'all, y'all got me there. Ch- chapter 3. Church of Laodicea. The Laodiceans. Okay. Chapter 3. Y'all got me? Chapter 3. Everybody, live screen, chapter 3. Chapter 3. Okay. Make sure y'all ain't going to sleep on me. Now, angel's going to write and record this. And I, I love how God wanted it to be inked. God wanted paperwork and ink to come together for us, right? So in chapter 3, verse 14, he says, Until the angel of the church of the late Odysseans write, record this, record this, these things says the amen. Okay? The amen. The mediation, the one who brings mediation saying, write this. The one who's faithful saying, write this. The true witness says, write this. The beginning of the creation of God. He says, write this. Right? The author and finish of our faith says, write this. 
Get it to the church. He says, I know your business. That's what the word work means. The Greek word is ergon. I know your business. I know your employment. I know where, where you've been working at. He says that thou are you're not neither cold or hot. Didn't I tell you to make it either or? Didn't I tell you to make the soul either or? Didn't I tell you to make the tree good or bad? Now he's using the term cold and hot, which is the same connection. Okay? He says, I would thou were cold or hot. You know what I wish you was? I wish you were at cold. You wasn't for me. I wish you were just one that's just don't honor me. That's what I really wish about you. I, I wish you would just be true to being enmity against me. I wish you would just stay true to that. Right? Told the angel to write it. Get it to the church. I wish you would just walk around blaspheming me. Be true to this. He said, oh, I wish you was hot. My desire, my craving to have you one or the other. But to be a twofold. In this earthly house, in this duplex, have I not taken the gospel to work out my salvation? Have I not taken the gospel to repent of my sins? Have I not taken the blood of Jesus to overcome my world? Monday's coming. Are you going back like the dog? To that which came up out of you? Jesus. My word is designed to be a light unto your path. You don't stumble because I'm not your stumbling stone. I'm your chief cornerstone. Where I expect you to offer me spiritual sacrifices. Loving your enemy is a spiritual sacrifice. Being the best you in Christ at all times is a spiritual sacrifice. It's a God sacrifice. It's what God said, I have a claim. I have a need for you to do this for me. And when you do it for me, I'm glorified. Yeah, when you're patient by the fruit that you bear. Now, I lay a foundation as we build this because I have to get you over to Colossians later on because Colossians is going to tell you to put it to death. Your members, they are members too. They, did you know your, 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 your flesh behavior have members? And all your members be, hey, what about me? We still friends? <laughs> I feel like this today. Okay? So he says, so then because they are lukewarm, so you're a mixture. You're lukewarm. How do you get lukewarm? You add a mixture, right? You're 50-50. Right? You're a duplex in the same building. You're, you're bipolar. Paranoia and schizo. Spiritually speaking, not understand that we do because of our chemical imbalance in our bodies. But some of us, it's worse than a real paranoia or uh, bipolar person. I understand them more than I understand you. Because you're going from blessing the people, now you want to kill them? Now you can't stand them? Now you're going to be foul with them? Right? Make the tree good or make it evil. Right? I can't preach holiness and check off on adultery. Check off on fornication. One brother said to a young lady, he says, when I walk in the pulpit, I'm a different man. He said, but when I walk out of the pulpit, I'm just like any other man. I got feelings. Right? You're a duplex. Right? You're a duplex. So you come in the building. You think the building is the church? God don't even dwell in this. Buildings made with hands, he don't dwell in them. This is the tabernacle that he dwell in. Amen. 
cold or hot, right? Let's make a choice. Good or evil, let's make a choice. So if you write down cold or choice, because he says in verse 15, you're neither. Okay? Because you're two, you're still the same. This is a letter to the church. Amen? A letter to the church. And I want to thank the Lord for getting a letter to my church. Amen? I want to thank him for getting a letter to my, search, to my church and getting a doctor on my case. Amen? A doctor that will cut me to the marrow of my bone and then discern my thought and intent of my heart. How many praise God for that today? Amen? Resurrection Sunday is coming, but it's resurrection right now. Amen? Jesus can redeem us right now if you want to be redeemed. If not, you're going back and practice a lukewarm life because you refuse to use the power that I gave you to make it what I call it to be. Option one, I'll have you hot. Option two, I'll have you cold. But I will not accept a mixture of the nature. Amen? I felt good going to church today. That ain't good enough. Mm -mm. I want to encourage you because of what's here, what's coming. If you can't discern the times, I want to encourage you to wake up and say, Lord, help me. Bring me into this relationship that you desire for me. Bring me. Amen. I want to be a one fold. One fold means I want to be complete and I want to be whole. Amen. What you see on Sunday, you will see it on Sunday night. What you see on Monday, you see it on Monday, as you saw it on Sunday. The danger of having a fountain that gives you sweet water and bitter water. As I said the other night, the danger of a fountain that's going to give you salt water. I encourage you not to drink it. If you do, you will lose your life. Amen? There's people who've been at sea, and they got so thirsty, they thought they could survive by drinking that salt water. When that salt water hit you, it will take you out of this world because it's not designed for the nourishment of your body. So today, as a loving people who love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and the times that we're in, ever been a time I say and I beg you and I plead with you, have a relationship according to what God will and not what you will. Amen? Amen? And I pray that you think about changing your mind, transforming your mind, and let's be a new form. So that's form number two. Form number one is not acceptable because it's a mixture of two. Amen? Your first birth is not acceptable because it's a mixture of two natures that has always been forbidden by God. God has never wanted man to have two natures, good and evil. So he's telling the church, he's telling us, you choice which one you want. Amen? And I beg us all today to fall on your knees. You're going to need him, for he needs you. A lot of us have our head in the sand because they say the news is so bad. Well, if you don't watch CNN, you need to watch this. Amen? Because I'm warning you now. I'm warning you now. What you see going on in the world is nothing more than prophecy. And we are just in the beginning. And I have to say it and say it and say it and say it and say it. And I pray you have an ear to hear what God is saying to you, the church. Amen. The time you think you have, you don't have. Amen. Holy Cross is just about full. Yeah, no. no, it's too late for the hospital when you get there. They got, that's okay. That's, that's where most of the Nigerians go. Okay. With understanding, there's tornadic weather coming this week. The meteorologists people learn to listen to them. But there are some storms that are natural and there are some storms that are spiritual. You and I are more afraid of the natural storm than we are the spiritual storm. 
But I ask that you come into the secret place with God. And I ask that you come and hang out in the secret place of the Most High and stay there with a transformed mind. Make up your mind to be holy as he's holy. Live right according to his holy and precious word. Amen? People are being found dead in their bed. Strokes and heart attacks out of nowhere. Amen? We're not talking about old people. We're talking about all people. So, nothing wrong with dying. Die in the Lord. Okay? The storms that are coming, we've been blessed. This city cannot handle a Cat 5 hurricane. You cannot handle a, a Category 5 tornado or 3. Amen? We've been blessed so far. They come this way and they go around us. But they hit other lands and regions and territory. Well, that's them going on now. But what about our day? How many can say God has caused you to escape many things? I pray it stay just in that vein. But I want to encourage you. Ever been a time you wake up and be about God's business? Ever time you wake up and realize you're not your own? This is the day and this is the time. Ever you make up your mind you're going to be hot for God? You need to do it. Nobody should make you do nothing for God. Nobody should make you come to church. Nobody should make you serve. This is my constitution. This is what I do. It's the essence of who I am. I love my God. I serve my God. I bless my God. I worship my God at all times. Amen. Who take care of us? Who provide for you? Who honors your prayers? God, my Father in heaven do. I'm not lucky. I'm divinely favored. Amen. Amen. How many can say that right now? I'm divinely favored. All this hot and cold relationship, one moment you're on, the next minute you're off. Do we need a dearth? Do we need a famine? Do we need an earthquake? We don't. I don't even want that. But who say we exempt from it? All, if it do happen, all I want to be is like Job in a transformed state of mind. And say, blessed be the name of the Lord. I have a bed to go to today, but don't mean I'll have it tonight. Today we have homes and we're not refugees, but this time next week we might be refugees. Amen. Refugees mean I have no place to call my own. Can you discern the time? When it come down to serving God, wake up everybody. The decade came in like no other decade in my lifetime. Amen? And it's not over yet. Whether you know it or not, there's so many chickens done died. So many turkeys done died because of a virus hit. At one point in time, you know it was hard to find chickens? But did you know that so many had died? No, because we, are, we just think, oh, it's the COVID. More than COVID is going on, the birds is catching flus. Amen? So I say this today, let's take a transform. Who said you had time to keep the land what God told you to do? You grown, my daddy said, you grown, mister. Yeah, you got your fine car, you got your fine house, you got your fine health. But this time tomorrow, out of nowhere, my health could fail me. Amen? Go home, you hit a button and the garage come up. You go home and hit a button and the TV come on. You don't have to get up and do nothing no more. You ought to be able to get up and say, Lord, I worship you. Amen? Amen? If you can right now, get up and say, Lord, I want to thank you. Lord, I want to honor you. I don't take what you're doing for granted. I want to say with my own hand, with my own mouth, I want to lift up to you in my own way. I want to acknowledge your goodness and your mercies and your kindness that's been following me. I want to say to you, thank you. I have to say it because I have breath to say it. Not because you make me say it. I want to say it. Not because you make me say it. I have a constitutional right to represent who I represent. Glory to you, God.
honor to you, God. Amen. I don't take it for granted that my heart is hitting right. I don't take it for granted that my legs is moving right. Amen. Grace have been kind towards us. And you can't lift up your hands. You can't open your mouth. You can't think to say thank you. I say to the fire, praise God. I say to the tree, praise God. I say to the wind, praise God. I say to the stars, praise God. And everything that has breath, let us praise. Let me praise. See, when your mind change, your worship will become true worship. Yes, it will. If not, you're just an attendant. You're just an attendant of coming in for one hour, and you're going to walk out and go back to your slop. But you're going to need me before midnight. Amen. Amen. Do God have to beg you to live right? No, no. When your mind is changed. So God bless you today. You've been good students. You've been kind today. Amen. I treat you as the beloved. And I treat you as the people who have a pure heart. Amen. Amen. And I believe that the grace of God will be sufficient to keep you in all that you put your hands to, to do. Amen. When I look back and, and